Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about theme development, specifically troubleshooting your stencil setup and your theme's best practices when developing your own themes. First, let's take a look at some of the troubleshooting pages and these links will be provided in the description below. When it comes to just the initial uh, stencil CLI setup and installation, you can find that, especially if you are using a Windows operating system, you might run into some issues with installation of Chocolaty or your Python NPM configuration error. Um, if you receive any of these errors, please check out this page in our theme document setting. Uh, alternatively, if you're running into additional troubles with your uh, setup, you can find here at uh, Troubleshooting Your Stencil CLI on this page. It'll cover issues such as unsupported note version errors, um, missing module errors, Mac operating system errors, as we previously saw in an earlier video, that can happen. Uh, an alternative method is when you are doing that installation to definitely check your uh, package uh, lock JSON file to make sure that everything is up to snuff. Um, additionally, if you're running into 500 or 403 errors, um, redirects and the need for reinstallation of Sensil CLI, you can find uh, those troubleshooting tips here in our documentation. Um, as far as theme uploads, uh, which we will cover in a later video, um, finding error codes, warnings or restrictions, and workarounds, uh, and sort of uh, creating the ability to figure out through some methods. That is another area that we can find here in a page of troubleshooting theme uploads. Okay, let's move on to stencil theme development best practices. Um, learning the correct way to import theme images and inject theme variables is very helpful. Among uh, learning how to create an accessible theme to meet uh, ADA compliance using tools uh, like Lighthouse and accessibility best practices, which we will cover in the next video. Uh, but as far as best practices go, we will cover a few topics. Uh, the first one being importing images. Um, there are two ways to import images. First uh, way to go is you could use your web dev client um, uh, to upload images into your content directory. Um, you can access your web dev by going to your storefront and in your settings you will be able to go down for your file access for uploading images. Alternatively you can upload images through your storefront image manager. So if you come over to your image manager, there is a way to upload your images that way. Uh, the CDN with your web dev would be ideally for more bulk image uploading. When uploading and importing images, ensure that they are the high quality and appropriate dimensions and are low bit size. Uh, this will increase your site speed. Uh, we recommend using stencil themes and support responsive images. Once you have these images, uh, BigCommerce will optimize them. Uh, JPEGs are the recommended format. Uh, there are uh, some articles in our documentation which will be provided in the description below uh, for more information on optimizing your images. The next thing we'll be covering is injecting variables. Injecting JavaScript context variables allow you to access store data through your theme. You can inject JavaScript context variables using the handlebars helper inject. Uh, be sure to assign a custom variable name with these injected variables. You can then use the handlebars helper to access a stringified JSON object containing all injected data with your assigned custom variable as the keys and the key value pairs. Uh, for more information, we have uh, an article to explain this further. It will also be provided in the links below. Um, 
let's take a look at a possible code example to log the product name to your browser's console when added to the Cornerstone product HTML file. So we will open Visual Studio Code and we'll come down to our product HTML file. So an example we could use would be using the inject and JavaScript context handlebars to log the product name uh, to your browser console when you add to Cornerstone's product HTML file. And we can just do that by right there and there you would have it uh, we'd have to add in some script for some uh, logic and then once that is done that would be complete you could file save and that will start to uh, populate your product's name but it is recommended injecting only the variables you need if you inject all settings um, you could cause performance issues with your site I uh, hope this was helpful to you and Look forward to seeing you in the next one.